in the general, um, we're going to be evaluating this. So um, again, we're just trying to find the values that are not a part of the domain. The implied domain is all real numbers, except we notice that there's variables in the denominator. So we know that whatever those values are um, for the variable, it cannot make the denominator equal to 0. So to find the domain, we set our denominator equal to 0. Thankfully, Mr. McLogan provided that zero product property uh, kind of focus lesson today. So therefore, we know that we can set these both equal to 0 and solve. So x equals negative 1, x equals 7, right? But remember, those are the values that make the denominator equal to 0. Negative 1 half. That is correct. Did I not divide by 2? Thank you. So those are the values, though. Yes, we set equal to 0. But when, with those, when our x equals those values, that makes our denominator equal to 0, correct? So these are the values that are actually not a part of our domain, not in our domain. So again, remember, the implied domain, there's no restrictions. So we're going from negative infinity to infinity, right? But we have an issue. At negative 1 half, um, at negative 1 half, there's you know, a hole or an asymptote. We don't know what it is right now because we're going to learn about that later. Um, but the graph is not continuous at this point. That's not in our domain. At 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, there is a hole or an asymptote. Okay? So the, imp so the implied domain of negative infinity to infinity doesn't work because we have two values where it's not a part of our, um, we have two values where uh, we can't have in our domain. So what I do is I just find, find an interval for each of these sections. You guys can see how there's three sections? So this first one is negative infinity to negative 1 half, negative 1 half to 7, and 7 to infinity. Because the graph's going to look like this. It's going to stop there, it can do whatever here, and then it's going to go like that. But there's a whole or an asymptote at those two values because it's not defined. It's not defined. And I can actually show you guys something as far as there as well. Um, so therefore, then you just put these in, union. Put them in, union. So if I can write over here, you could write it like this, negative infinity, negative 1 half, union, negative 1 half, comma 7, union, 7 comma infinity. Does everybody see that, kind of? Yes, no? Let's actually, um, let's look at that. Let's look at that graph. Let me show you what it looks like. Could somebody, uh, actually, never mind. So that was x squared minus 3x. And this is 2x plus 1 times x minus 7. So do you guys see how that graph is not continuous? Yeah. It doesn't connect. Right? And we're going to talk about continuity here in a second, as long as you're not um, putting it. But you guys can see the graph. You're going from negative infinity. But instead of it passing over to this one, this shoots up and that shoots up. And it approaches, there's that asymptote at negative 1 half. And here, there's that asymptote at 7. So it doesn't connect. right? So the domain, again, is our implied domain, all real numbers. This red graph encompasses every single real number. See how it keeps on expanding left and right? It's going to keep on going left and right forever. However, there's two numbers that the graph does not cross, x values that the graph does not cross. And those two numbers are negative 1 half and 7, because that's what you set your denominator equal to 0 for. Okay? And again, this is how we'd write our domain. You basically just break it up into those three sections and then just union them. Okay. Yes, no, maybe so. OK. Um, let's do the next one. The 
the range. Yeah, and we're going to learn how to do domain and range, um, or how to do range. But right now, we're just going to focus on domain. But yes, that would be negative infinity to infinity. All right, let's do the next one. Next one. Ah, why am I still recording? Oops. <laughs> 